thank you all. My very last moment to have your undivided attention. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're getting hungry for what's coming after, but I'm going to hold you back for just a wee little while. If you know how to do this, just join in, okay? Love is something if you give it away, give it away. Into the heat. 
and then slowly they begin to join together and what we see is a tiny little cloud. And as the evaporation continues, the cloud grows and grows and grows. And then just when you had planned the picnic, it starts <laughs> to rain. What I'd like to say to you is that right now, history is getting very heated up. And that is causing a spiritual evaporation. People are longing longing for things to be different, and that removes them from the ordinary and begins to lift them up into the possibility of God. Right now in the earth, drop by drop by drop, a cloud of spiritual life is being formed, and very soon it's going to reach that critical proportion at which time it will begin to rain blessing on the earth. And what I'd like you to know is that for many generations we have thought that ministers were the only ones who could speak about the love of God. That is something I would like you to question. I would like you to ask, when Jesus went around and gathered people to him, did he send them off to university? Did he send them off to seminary? Who were these people? Fishermen. Farmers, aunties, uncles, grandmas, kids, teenagers. Jesus embraced them all. He said, let them come to me. Why? Because in a dark place, if there's one light, everybody gets the benefit. And when folks gathered around Jesus, they got the benefit of the light that was in him. And what he wanted to do was not have them worship him. What he wanted them to do was to become like him. That is to say, so that each one who had faith that what Jesus was saying was more important than what all the powerful people in the earth were saying, each one who believed that and had the faith to trust it, that those persons step out and live their lives as if they were light in the darkness. And when I think back on all of my years in the church, it's easy to say, wow, it's been good to be appreciated as a minister. But for me, it's much more important to say how much I appreciate all the people that I have met along the way who in small and large manners have made a difference. The calling of a friend in a time of sickness, the word of encouragement when somebody is discouraged. That's the gospel. The gospel is not about high and holy doctrines. If you do not believe this, you're going to hell. If you don't believe that, you're going to hell. If you don't believe the other thing, you're going to hell. The gospel is about one simple thing. The light of God is within you. Get in touch with it. Get rid of the things that hide it from other people's view. Your fears, your insecurities, your doubts, your <coughs> concern with the things of this world. Cultivate that little light in you. Let it shine. And as that spirit of God in you grows strong and healthy, like a plant in your garden, that light in you will make a difference for everybody that you meet. Bev talked about my influence in her life. I could talk about Bev's influence in the life of our young people, or Andrea. And what an important job this is. One of the things that's sad about being a minister is often, when you get to talk about things that matter, the kids go downstairs. But last night we hung out with the teenagers, and when I saw what a wonderful bunch of people this was, how with all of their differences, they were friends. There were great, big, tall, clumsy ones. There were little, <laughs> tiny, graceful ones. Right? But all of them, and at the end of the evening, we were a bit early, we were starting to clean up, and then we looked over, there they all were sitting in a circle, chatting, laughing, playing games, being family together. Church is not about religion. That might shock you, but church as religion has brought more harm into the world than good. 
Now saying that I want to be clear that religious people, of course, are among all those who are counted as light bearers in the world. So there's persons here who make a difference. There's persons at Grace Mennonite who make a difference. There's persons at Southland who make a difference. There's persons in all of our faith communities who make a difference. And not just our faith communities, but the faith communities of the whole wide world. We are now in a time when people are fighting about religion. And one religion is saying, I'm the best religion. And the other religion is saying, no, I'm the best religion. And then they bless tanks, and they bless guns, and they bless armies, and they go to fight about who's got the best religion. I'm sorry, folks, that's failure. What it is, is that each person who carries the light of God into all of their relations, and that's your opportunity. That's your opportunity as a person. That's the only message I really have for you and I've ever had for you. I had a friend, Gil McKenzie, and in his 90s, Gil had been a minister all of his life. And I said to Gil one day, Gil, if you could take everything you've ever preached and boil it and boil it and boil it till there's nothing left except for what really matters, what would you say? And Gil, this gentle old fella, did not even hesitate. He said simply, for God's sake, be kind to one another. And that's the message of Jesus. Because when the power begins to exploit and oppress the world, people get divided. And they begin to pick on each other. They begin to quarrel with their families. They begin to quarrel with their churches. What they should be doing is uniting together, being strong together, and then lifting up their voice and saying to the powers that are spoiling the earth, stop. We want things to be different. We want every child on the planet to have food. We want every child on the planet to have clothing and shelter. We want every child on the planet to be loved by moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. We don't want just our little group to be blessed by God. We want everybody to be blessed by God. There's two powers in the world. The power of dividing and the power of uniting. And this is one of the few times when I'm thrilled to say that we are the United Church. And I do hope that as time goes forward, here in this little community, you will show this town, this region, and maybe even the whole wide world that the unity of love is the most important thing in the whole wide world. Now, I'm going to write a book when I've done this, and if you want to hear more about what I have to think, I'll sell you that book. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, I'm going to let it go. I would like you to know that you are the light of the world. Or at the very least, I would like you to know that the light of the world lives in you. Get in touch with it and express it. And please be clear, you don't have to express it religiously. When you console a grieving widow, when you console a gentleman who's just lost his wife, religion has nothing to do with that. What matters is the arm around the shoulder, the bowl of soup that is brought to the kitchen table, the kind words that are spoken. This is what the world needs now, and you have opportunity to show them how it can be accomplished. I'll stop there. Amen.